Okay, usually I do a gun show report or something, uh, but in this video it's going to be titled Why I Stop Going to Gun Shows. Um, and, and just like anything, with the current situation with the country as a whole here in the United States, um, and we all know each state has its own different regulations and laws. Now I know that some people uh, have kept in contact with me and told me that a while ago their states allowed gun shows to open and a little bit more freedom than my state. Uh, you know, in North Carolina, they kind of just recently let go of all the restrictions. And there are some states where restrictions are still in place. So it's hard to say, you know, it all kind of depends on your locale and the situation. Uh, but some people have told me in certain states that they went back to normal shortly afterwards and um, things went on. And they say, okay, now how much of this is not trying to jab me, they say things went back to normal and everything's great and I'm selling stuff and trading and buying and selling guns. Uh, what I noticed here is uh, one individual locally without me having to drive two hours or more uh, was running a series of gun shows and this guy covers the whole state. His venues are very small. The admission is reasonable, five dollars. But in 15 minutes you can walk through the whole day and show. And uh, like I said in my past reports, once things loosened up and we were able to open up uh, venues, uh, they're all small. Even though one of the larger promoters, C&E, uh, is doing shows again, the venues are small. They're not getting the vendors, you know, the good vendors uh, that would have something I'm interested in. And also, the attendance started to drop off when it first was there. There were a lot of people, a lot of confusion, controversy. And then, like I said in my past reports, you know, I'm walking down an aisle and somebody has one item, a packet of ammunition of some sort, um, for $25. And you walk down 20 feet and go to another table, the person has it for uh, $8. Same thing. Same reloading components. Very spotty. It's kind of like whatever people had left over in a store or an inventory. And prices were anywhere from the old prices where a pound of gunpowder was $25 to where people were selling you gunpowder for $50, $60 a pound. So a lot of this left kind of a bad taste in people's mouths. Uh, and they're angry. So you seen as the months went by and each show would go by through the venue and then another thing like I discussed is because the promoters basically were out of business for a year they were trying to shove as many gun shows in as they could which threw the normal schedule that a lot of people who that's their main venue is to travel to gun shows throughout the states there are a few dealers I know that, you know, they don't have a store. They will travel on the weekends and go throughout the state uh, setting up at gun shows. And there is a set schedule for different places and, and that. Well, they threw the schedule off. They're adding more shows to the calendar. And this also, uh, when people pay, the reason I didn't go to the last gun show, it would be an hour and 45 minute drive for me to get to the venue. It was a good one. It's in the part of the state, you know, towards the center of the state. And in the past, I used to go because you get dealers from another locale. In other words, they travel from the opposite end of the state. And they may have some stuff that I'm interested in, mostly the old mill surplus and odd things like that. Well, also I wanted to uh, sell an item, and I tried going to a couple shows to sell an item, bring it with me, 
and really didn't get any offers. That is done. You know, gun shows used to be you go there, there were people willing to trade, not so much the dealers, but say I came up and I had an old gun, I could find somebody wandering around out of the thousands of people that may be interested and be able to make a deal. Being an old mill surplus gun, I see a lot of people with nice hunting rifles and stuff they're trying to sell. Uh, but that used to be the old way of doing it. And I found that if I go there with that intent, other than setting up a table, okay, which I don't have, uh, I've kind of given up on that, but I've, I don't have enough items to sell to warrant me renting a table. In other words, I, you know, I doubt I'd generate anything if I sell one thing. It's a big expense to uh, make nothing, even just renting one table. Um, so I thought it over and I said at the driving there that I was going to take the wife with me so that would have been $20 to get in and of course we're going to stop me eat lunch everything else and then with gas approaching three if not more dollars a gallon the driving back and forth and chances are because of the last few shows I went to probably would not be a good turnout or a lot of people that, that, that were going to trade in anything that I had or have anything I would be interested in buying because all of it is is the common ammo, 9mm, 45, 38, um, reloading components is like I said, hit or miss, it's crazy and nobody has the powders I'm looking for, okay? And if they do, they're priced at $50, $60 a pound. So to go through there, sort this out, and look at it, it's best, like I said, just, just take a break from it all. Uh, probably I'll eventually start going back to gun shows, but right now, in this interim period, and I have to do another video about how the prices on ammo and guns have all shifted and changed. The availability of firearms has all changed, and... It's this weird influx. You have this panic and this spike where there's all these shortages. Then over time, gradually, you're going to come down on the downhill side. And it just creates a mess. And the one thing that I did notice when going to the gun shows is people were getting upset. And I told everybody when it started, just stop. Don't panic. Don't buy anything don't buy ammunition that was selling before all this started for eight ten dollars a box okay don't be paying fifty sixty dollars a box for it okay unless you really desperately need a box of nine millimeter ammo okay and granted there were a lot of things in the news a lot of unrest in the earlier part of this year and the later part of last year where people I can say were justified in wanting to get their hands on some ammo. But here's the thing. There is no war. There is no expenditure. Um, you know, the, the need, or also there was a fear a lot of people said that maybe it'll never be available again. With the change of government, there could be laws that uh, you will not be able to buy ammo again, which... I'd say that's a long shot, it wouldn't happen immediately, but see this gave rise to where people were panicking and buying, all this stuff combined together. There's so many things that combine it all together, it's ridiculous. Um, so that's why going to the gun shows now, at least where I am locally, um, kind of, I'm going to curtail from it. I do have some other things going on, which I just don't have the time to travel there any the expense, because all it ends up being is a nice drive, spending some money, and wandering around, maybe talking to some people interested in guns, but there's nothing there that I really need or want. Um, and the reason for that is, and I will get into it in another video talking about ammo and gun shortages, which is a whole different topic and how that uh, changes 
because gun shows are one of many venues to purchase guns and ammo. Okay? There are others that don't involve gun shows, and this is, we'll, I'll discuss that in the other video, how the effects and how everything's going up and down, and especially in terms of prices and availability. Okay? But that's kind of where I sit with the gun shows for now. I probably won't go in to any of them. I know next month I don't plan on it because I have some things to do. And I don't know when. I have to see when uh, the venues are scheduled. Right now it's crazy. It's like a gun show every weekend somewhere. Okay. And uh, it's tough. But I, I think gradually, you know, gun shows for what they used to be and how you used to go and be able to trade and talk to people and visit with dealers, you know, that live far away and see what they have. Um, all of that's coming to an end because it's more of just whatever people are looking for, like this, you know, it's kind of like the Walmart. You go there and you just see tables and tables of 9mm, 12 gauge buckshot, 5.56, 7.62 by 39, and all this other stuff. And all the brand new polymer handguns or new type of handguns that there are. Um, you know, and that's what it's turned into. People just buying specifically defensive weapons and ammo. Uh, is more what you see at a gun show than anything. On a rare occasion, you do see a guy selling a collection with some odd stuff. And generally, the price is quite high. So, but that's my report on it. That's my feelings. Uh, and like I said, right now, everything's up in the air. We'll see how it goes. I may be able to get out some gun shows and do some reports here, but nothing immediately. All right.